There's some other uh, there's some other seats here that are still available. Keep your hands up, uh, if you will. I really appreciate that for those. I know there's some people that are just coming in the lobby. Come on over here and sit down. Uh, get your lunch. Sit down. We're going to go ahead and begin. So welcome to the lunch. Uh, it is for uh, they had been filming all day, and one of the top executives said, you are about to be very well known to millions of people. Well, everything changed overnight it's because of the cost. And it is a book well worth reading. So you can get it back there at the Liberty Council table and name it adjacent. From the inside out. We don't live from the outside in. We don't need media. We don't need other people to tell us how to live. We live from the inside out. But we remember we were 12 years old when we prayed to receive Jesus into our heart. And I can remember my dad said, guys, when you give your heart... profound, it came from David. If it strikes you as odd, it came from Jason. Now, I'm two minutes older than he is, and we have nine kids between the two of us. Can you figure out, can you figure out which one has five and which one has four? I will let him win that battle. He's going to a cross, and he bids you come follow me. You know, it wasn't long ago, Jason and I, we were playing baseball. As a matter of fact, it's March 14th. Not too many years ago, we were playing baseball. He was in Sarasota with the Orioles. I was in Fort Myers with the Red Sox. We came up to Orlando to play. We got some Sox fans, yes. But I got traded to the St. Louis Cardinals. Are there any Cardinals fans here? <laughs> I was a Baltimore Oriole. I was calling in, and Jason and I, we were on the fast track. We had died to becoming Major League Baseball players. Now I say to people, the reason why we never made it to the big leagues was that I chose to retire. Jason couldn't hit a curveball. <laughs> the empty wagon does rattle the loudest. I you saw it in the video, it's true. But here we didn't make it to the big leagues and now we're filming this major reality television show. As a matter of fact, TLC made us our first offer and we know the Duggar family. We got any Duggar fans out here? I see, great. Some, I see some Duggar domes out there. <laughs> and I called the Duggars. I said, hey, we're going to be on TLC with you. We were all excited. Stop for a second. I'm talking. And so, but then HGTV came in and made us this big offer. They said, listen, we're bypassing a pilot uh, that actually happened to us. So that's why I say it's fun to follow Jesus until you find out where he's going. You know, that first interview where I was wearing this, this peach shirt, that was strategic. I was wearing a peach shirt, and Erin Burnett on CNN, she, she's just about to ask me a question. Now, Jason and I, we're sitting there at Live Shots in Charlotte like this. I mean, we were filming the day before. Could you scoot over? No, I wanted, this is for the effect. Just come into the middle, come there. So we're sitting here like this, and we got these little earpieces in, and, and you can hear the producer in CNN go, okay, you're going live in five, four, three, and your heart just starts beating like crazy. Jason, I, it was everything I do to keep his thumb out of his mouth, and she just asks that question, David Benham, you said there's a homosexual agenda that's destroying the moral fabric of America. Explain your statement. And my mouth got as dry, I mean, I didn't even know what to say, I'm like, I... Jason and I found ourselves, how do we articulate truth to the nation? As a couple of guys, we're not policy guys, we're not preachers, we're not politicians. It's interesting that the New England Patriots just weighed in on gay marriage. It's also interesting that the New York Mets told one of their baseball players, you can't say anything about what the Bible says about gay marriage, but they allow Billy Bean to say whatever he wants and give him just a rubber stamp to go into any major league clubhouse that he wants. Here's the interesting thing. What's happening in this nation is a battle between two seeds, the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman, the battle between truth and lies, light and darkness. We've had all these interviews and we've had all these people and by that time, so many of the news outlets uh, on the other side had really made us out to be haters and homophobic and all women haters and all of these things. You know what pulled us through that? We had heard for far too long in the church that we need to be relevant. What pulled us through this was a focus on reverence. That if we simply be reverent, then relevance will become a byproduct of that. If we focused on relevance at that moment, then we were going to nuance our speech. 
try to get a little more strategic, we were then going to begin to operate at the level of, you know, before God wants you to speak a message, oftentimes he makes you the message. And this takes a lot of time. You know, King David, he was anointed king when he's a teenager, but then he had to go get on the backside of a mountain, probably while the oil is still dripping down his head. I mean, who wants to do that? He's pulling these sheep beside still waters. God was going to make him the message. He was going to bring him the kingdom when he saw fit. David didn't need to go out there and get ambitious. He was going to work on fixing culture and other people. And so when God put us in our little fix, we were tapped on the shoulder and by God's grace, because of the brokenness that we had already experienced, there was a boldness that came over us. Boldness apart from brokenness makes you a bully. Here, HG loves us. This platform, we're going to be in millions of homes Oh my goodness, this is going to be awesome. Now they want to know if we're anti-gay. And however I answer this question could mean the platform is gone. Or it could mean the platform stays with us. You want to know the first thing that I felt? Real, genuine fear. I was terrified. We're pro-family. We're pro-marriage. We're pro-life. We believe, believe that life begins at conception. But after I hung up the phone for about two weeks... I still struggled with that fear inside of me. It felt like a breakup. I mean, he was used to getting dumped. I had never been dumped a day in my life. No clapping. No, no, no you, can't, you can't do that. High school was a different situation for me than it was this guy. But I really felt like I was getting dumped. I felt like, I, I thought, you know what? They're, they're, gonna, they're gonna cancel our show. They're not gonna let it happen. And I felt that genuine fear. And I remembered Peter. I remembered Peter. And we had our little Peter moment. That when Peter, here he was, the most bold disciple there was, now he's following city and tears down the stronghold in which they trust. Is there strongholds, excuse me, grammatically correct, are there strongholds in America? Is there a stronghold over marriage? Is there a stronghold over when life begins? Is there a stronghold over prayer and God and Bible reading in schools? The Ten Commandments in our courtroom? You better believe it. So what is God calling us to do? Tear down that stronghold in which they trust and build a proper altar of worship to Him. And this is a spiritual battle. But here's the promise. And here's the, the title of our topic. The Lord is with those who stand for Him. Yeah. Hallelujah. When you stand, the Lord is with you. So let's pray.